Okay, question 11. Um, if a pendulum driven clock gains 3.95 seconds a day, but fractional change in fact, uh, pendulum length must be made for it to keep perfect time. Express your answer as a percentage rounded to four decimal places. Mm -hmm. I remember looking at this question and wanting to do it slightly differently from the hint. Uh, I don't know if that's necessarily quicker. Um, let's see. Well, um, let me give it a uh, let me give it a go. So I'm going to try to take this in a direction that's uh, kind of different from hint, in an attempt that um, it might be conceptually better. So this is how you do um, you do get a start. So you have to mathematically express that uh, clock gains. 3.9 seconds per day. So what I'm going to take that to mean is that, um, so in a day, the, hmm, how do I, um, let's make this easy for myself and just to think of a very abstract <laughs> pendulum clock, which has a period of one day. So then the proper period, T naught, is going to be, um, you know, 24 hours times um, one hour is equal to 36 hundred seconds. So that's what the, the proper period should be. But my, our wrong period, T1, is this much time plus that additional delta T, or 3.95 seconds per day for our number C here. So, um, all right. So it's asking for what fractional change in pendulum length. And um, all right, since it's talking about pendulum length, let's relate pendulum length to period. We have this formula for natural oscillation frequency of a pendulum. The natural oscillation frequency is equal to square root of G over L. All right. Um, let me express the left-hand side in terms of period so that I can relate this to period. So omega is uh, 2 pi times the frequency. Frequency is 1 over period. So this is 2 pi over the period. Okay. Uh, oh, I can solve this for period. So from all of this, you get period is equal to 2 pi times the square root of L over G. Okay, did that correctly. Okay, so what you would say is that, oh, so I have this one period. Once again, I'm to make my job easier, I'm just saying that um, this pendulum based clock has a period of one day. <laughs> um, so I guess the kind of intuitive assumption I'm making is that the actual period of the clock doesn't matter, whether it's a period is one second or a period is whatever number of seconds, it's only the proportionality that matter. Hopefully I'm right, right? <laughs> um, so I can say, all right, that period is equal to two pi times the square root of the correct length, L naught over G. All right. And I have T1, which is T0 plus this additional amount. And this must be equal to 2 pi times square root of um, the actual length of the pendulum over G. All right, uh, let's see.
Okay. Um, I think from here on, so basically what I'm trying to do is the hint that you're given is it's a fine hint. Um, it's, in fact, that's a, how you would uh, end up doing problems like this. Uh, as you gain more com comfort with the calculus and, you know, calculus actually makes so many questions easier. That's why calculus-based physics is easier to teach than other kinds of physics. Um, but what I wanted to try to do here is to show you that um, when you feel like you don't have a solid grip on that advanced mathematical technique, you can actually work with what you have. Uh, you can work out things numerically and it'll still all work out. So what I think I can do is, I think I can actually just work out these uh, values of L naught and L. Uh, each of these equations, I know the numbers. I can just work out these numbers. And having worked them out, I can figure out what the difference is divided by L to get percentage. And I think that'll be fine. The only thing I worry about is, um, it's the rounding, rounded to four decimal places. Um, if the, so, yeah, we'll get to that if I, we have to. So let me just solve this for L naught. Uh, solving this for L naught, this is what I get. Uh, so I guess I divide the whole left-hand side by two pi, square both sides, and then multiply by G. So doing that, uh, gives me L naught is equal to G times this whole thing that's gonna be squared, 24 hours times 3600 seconds per hour, divided by two pi, the whole thing squared. G is 9.8 meters per second squared. Second squared will cancel out, I'll get meters. Let's plug this into calculator. This is a numerical exercise for me. Uh, you can actually, so if you are using uh, calculus, then you won't have to plug in numbers so sorely. 9.8 times, parenthesis, 24 times 3600 divided by two divided by pi, um, the whole thing squared. All right, so this is what I have. Once again, this is a ridiculous clock. It's a, Super long. Um, it, it's a ridiculous clock. So let me write this down. One. Uh, all right. I'm just gonna just move that scientific calculator over so I can actually look at it to write it down. One uh, comma eight five three comma zero seven eight comma uh, five two eight point or five. The reason I'm keeping so many um, uh, significant figures is, um, I, one, I have a sense the difference is gonna be small. So I don't wanna prematurely round. So the formula for L is actually the, exactly the same. The only difference is instead of using this, just this time, I add 3.95 seconds. So that's a G times that time. Uh, let me just write that. 24 times 3600 plus 3.95 seconds divided by two pi, the whole thing squared. Okay, let's plug that into, uh, let me do that on a new calculator in case I needed those more digits. <laughs> All right, so 9.8 times parenthesis, um, 24 times 3600 plus 3.95. The parenthesis is done. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Um, uh, I needed two uh, layers of parenthesis. All right, once again, 9.8 times inner layer, 24 times 3600 plus 3.95. Close of the inner one divided by two pi. Um, now square that and I get, all right, that's fairly close. Um, so I'm just moving it off so that I can watch and write it down. That's equal to one, eight, 
five, three. Okay, now they're gonna be different. Two, four, seven, nine, six, eight, point nine, one. So after taking difference, I'll have about six, um, eight significant figures, which is probably enough significant figures. Um, yeah, yeah, and I think the relative proportions work out that um, I think it's going to be fine. We'll try it and see. So let's work out the difference. The change in length, delta, delta L here is, so I just want the positive number. Wait. Um, a fractional change. Well, um, I think I want to shorten it. Uh, so let me just work out a positive answer. And if uh, when I plug in the number, if it says it's wrong, I'm just going to change the sign. <laughs> I do know um, that I should be shortening the pendulum. And it's a matter of, you know, yeah. So let's take the difference. Uh, yeah, I don't want to do it in my head. So let me do this here. Uh, minus the other calculator. 1853 um 078528.45 is equal to all right. Um, let me move that off so that I can look and do it together. Uh one six nine four four zero point uh four six. Double check. All right. So now I can calculate the delta L change in the length divided by L. And it shouldn't matter, but I'm just gonna use L instead of L now. And um, so take this delta L and divide it by 1853247.68.91. It's in fractions, so multiply by 100 to get percentage value. Oh, it says round to four decimal places. So um, that's actually not that uh, high of a precision. So I think I'm gonna be fine. So uh, what it, the answer it wants is um, 0 0.0091, that's four decimal places. So let me write that down, um, 0 0.0091%, plug that in and let's see. So it was 0 0.0.0091. Submit the question. Yeah, good. So once again, I'm deliberately doing it differently from the hint given here. And you know, this is a fine hint. If uh, it makes sense, uh, you know, even if it doesn't make sense, uh, give it a try. The, the calculus, calculus method that's being used when you are following this hint here, it will allow you to do questions like this much faster than how long it took uh, here. And it will also allow you to do the question without as much plugging in the numbers as I have done here. But what I want you to demonstrate here is um, when you see something like this, especially on a new exam, something that feels like that uh, requires advanced mathematical methods, and maybe it does, um, there's some value in knowing when to plug in numbers. Um, now, it, it's a, this is a kind of judgment that you have to develop because we do tell you to you know, not plug in numbers until you get to the very final expression. So in this very example, I'm breaking that rule, uh, but it's a case of uh, knowing when to break the rules. Uh, rules are not rigid things, it's a, well, creativity counts. Uh, creative problem solving is valuable.